Hi everybody, it's Marita Conlon McKenna here, marking the anniversary of Under the Hawthorn Tree. It's hard to believe, but it's 30 years since Under the Hawthorn Tree was first published, my very first book. It's a very special book for me, and it's very special to remember all the lovely things that have happened with the book and because of the book. Under the Hawthorn Tree um, was written for my daughter Mandy, and it was written for children and of course it's wonderful the way children and so many children not just here in Ireland but all around the world have been reading the book and have kept reading it year after year time after time and they're still reading it wonderful to see ever since I was a small girl all I wanted to do was write I wrote stories and plays and reviews and articles I had loads of pen, pen pals um, and um, all I wanted to do was write and writing made me happy and even though I'm much older now writing still makes me so happy so I kept writing and I was very lucky all through school and after I left school and lots of things I began to write started to get published which was wonderful I also was mad to find out more about children's literature and English literature and history and I studied all around this area and I remember I even did a course on creative writing and every week we had to do a different story and one of the first um, weeks we had to do was to write a children's story. Most people didn't enjoy writing a children's story, but I loved it. And so it was in my head that I found writing for children very, very easy. And when I had my own children, I began to write for them. I began to make lovely picture books. And I also love painting and drawing and art. I began to make these picture books for my children and I kept going with them. So I was writing away busily. Um, history had always been very important to me. And I remember when I was in school, my class, we studied all kinds of history, European history, world history, and um, the different big periods in history, the Vikings coming, the Normans, um, the Tudor times. And do you know something? We studied very little about the famine. It was passed over the Great Irish Famine very quickly, as if it was something we weren't meant to really think about or talk about. And I remember um, when I was in school, I loved learning about the famine even though there was very little about it in our history book and I kept trying to find out more and I remember one of my teachers said to me one day about it and I said to her I'm when I grow up I'm going to write a book about the great Irish famine and I don't know if she ever believed me but she did come to one of my book launches and said you told me you were going to do that but anyway so history was always in my mind as well and the great Irish famine and what happened I'd begun writing making these books for my children and one day I wanted to make a book for my older daughter, Mandy. And what happened one day, I heard this teacher being interviewed about this school down the country were putting in a football pitch and they were clearing the field, which was a very boggy, soggy field, to make this beautiful new football pitch that would be drained and perfectly dry. And what happened was with a big hawthorn tree in the middle of the field and the men came to take down the tree and they cut down the tree and there was a massive roots underneath and then they started to excavate the root. And of course, when they did, they found the skeletons. Uh, three small little skeletons that have been there since the time of the famine. There was consternation about this and everybody was saying, how did these children get there and what happened to them? And it was so strange because I was sitting at home, surrounded by my own children, and I felt like a ghost finger touched me and said, you, we want you to write your story. And I remember literally a few hours later, I got out my pad and my pen and I wrote the first chapter of Under the Hawthorn Tree. And it was really bizarre that this this just came out on the page so quickly, this first chapter. And I gave it to one a person, one of my friends to read, and she said to me, You've got to write more, you've got to tell us what happens to these children, Eile, Michael and Peggy. And so the book was written very, very, very quickly. It was actually written in twelve weeks, which now it's I don't know if I could ever write a book in twelve weeks again. But I couldn't put it down. And it, even though my children were very small, um, I wrote at night when they were in sleep, I wrote when they were in school, I wrote when the baby was having his nap and I wrote and wrote and wrote until I got the book done. And it's funny because I was doing a course in children's literature and I showed it to my lecturer and she read it and she loved it. And she said, oh, you have to make this a proper book. And one of my friends, her daughter was a bit older and she read it and she loved it. And she kept talking about this tree in the book, the Hawthorn tree. And mum said, she keeps thinking it's a proper book. It's not just these sheets of paper you've given her to read. So lots of people said it to me. And then in the end, I said, you know, maybe I will send it to a publisher. So I decided to send it to an Irish publisher called O'Brien Press, who are still my publishers. They're wonderful. And um, I remember actually, I didn't even trust it to the post. I put it in a big envelope 
and drove over and pushed it in the, the, the letterbox of their office and waited and waited and waited with such a long wait. They sent me a very quickly a letter to say, we have received your package, but that was all and we're going to read it. And I waited and waited and I was nearly giving up. And then finally one day I got a, a call to say, would I come in and meet um, Michael O'Brien, who was a publisher? So I remember going in and really nervous, sick, sick to my tummy. I went in to meet him and he said they'd read the book, they'd all read it and the editors and they loved the book and they were going to publish it. And I was so happy and so excited. And it's a very special book and I knew it was special myself. And he said to me, what way would you like this book to be done? And what kind of books did you read when you were growing up and what do you like? And we got talking and I said that when I was reading I always loved these books that had chapter illustrations. I always remember the chapter illustrations, um, which a lot of Irish books didn't have, and um, in the classics. And uh, he said, would you really like that? And I said, yes, I would. So then I was really very lucky because um, my publishers at Brian Press um, organised for this fantastic um, young artist, Donald Teskey, to do the illustrations for every chapter and Under the Hawthorn Tree. And Donald would also design the cover. So it was very, very special to have um, Donald doing the cover and um, do also doing the chapter illustrations, which were just wonderful. So that this was the start of getting under the Hawthorne tree together. And then after a long, long time, everything was done. The book was ready to go to print and get published. And they decided to have a launch in the National Library. Now that was also very special. And in fact, my lecturer, who had actually read it first, had now become the head of the National Library. So she organised to have the launch there. And it was a very special day and I was so nervous about this new book because the book, it was a hard book, but a lot of bad things happening and sad things happening. And I remember then when the book was launched, I was up to 90 worrying about what would people say when they read this book, which was very sad and much tougher than any other children's book had ever been published in Ireland and about a terrible time in our history. And uh, anyway, what happened was children began to read it. I'd written it for my child, my own daughter Mandy, and it was writ read by children, and then more and more and more children began to read it. And next thing, suddenly children had taken this book and they'd made it their own. And so Under the Hawthorne Tree had been read year in, year out, by so many children all over the world. And it's been, I've been going everywhere talking about it. I've been in America, I've been in Canada, I've been in China, I've been all over Europe. There's all been such wonderful events around Under the Hawthorne Tree. It's also won lots of book awards, which was very nice because I didn't expect that either um, to go around and have to collect these awards. It's just wonderful things have happened in the book. Also, there has been a stage play and uh, it in Belfast and in Canada and around Ireland. Um, first of all, in Canada, a musical, and now in the last while, a wonderful one in Ireland. There has been um, a film of it with young filmmakers in Kilkenny did a film many, many years ago. And fingers crossed eventually there'll be another bigger film. The book has always surprised me. When I go into schools, I meet children who are dressed up as Eileen, and Michael and Peggy. People tell me when their kids use play games with their brothers and sisters in the back garden or their neighbours and, and play the famine game and all dress up and pretend they were in the famine and trying to find food and fight off the dogs and bleed a cow and all the things the children do in the book. Also, um, it's been used in schools, not just in Ireland and in England, but also in New York, in Mexico. It's been on the curriculum in lots of places too, which is very special. I, I never expected my little book that I'd written for my daughter Mandy, so many people to read it and so many people to love it. Eileen, and Michael and Peggy have become friends to, to so many children and so many children write to me, not just from Ireland but from around the world, to tell me how special the books are and how much they love the characters and all the things they have to go through. And um, I still cannot believe it, 30 years on, under the Hawthorne tree. People still love it and care about it as much as I did on that first day when I took out a pad and a, and a pen on my kitchen table and began to write those opening chapters of that scene where Eileen, Michael and Peggy were in the cottage and the little sister was sick. Um, it, it just, time has gone like that in a flash and the book is still continuing and hopefully it will still continue more and that more people will get to read it and more people will learn to find out about what happened in Ireland's great famine and how the courage that people like Eileen, Michael and Peggy and lots of families around Ireland had to fight and to survive 
and to grab all the opportunity that came in the future in the other books you can read what happens when Peggy goes to America and, and Michael gets his life together. It's, it's just been a, a wonderful journey for me as a writer and also um, in the, to follow the journey that's in the books. So thank you so much to all of you wherever you are in the world for um, reading Under the Hawthorne Tree and for um, making me happy. I'm still happy writing and I'll still keep writing. Thank you so much.